Hi, welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and I'm so thrilled that you're at this podcast today. And I'm interviewing somebody rather extraordinary today, whose name is Grandmother Flor de Mayo. And I'm very honored that she is here with us. Uh, just to give you a preface, the show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. You can find them at accessconsciousness.com. I run a media visibility hub, meaning that I help you with visibility. I help you to write a highly engaging book, either through group sessions or through private sessions. I also run a program that guarantees your book becomes an international bestseller. I do all the work for you. I help you to produce anthology books. Once you pick the theme and bring the folks on board to each write a chapter, I do everything start to finish for your anthology and ensure its success. And then I teach you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts so you get massive results. I've got a free gift for you. And if you'll go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift, you can get your templates and videos and all the how to do these visibility pieces I'm talking about. So you can start doing this right away for your business, your being, and your message and get the visibility you deserve. Debbie Dashinger, D-E-B-B-I, D-A-C-H, I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. So this episode is about a healer and a Mayan priestess. My guest is Grandmother Flor de Mayo. She's a curandera espiritu, which means healer by divine spirit and a Mayan priestess. And she's one of the 13 granddaughters of the International Council of 13 Indigenous Grandmothers, a global alliance that teaches ancestral ways of prayer, education, and healing. She was the youngest of 15 children, and Flor de Mayo was born in the big highlands of Central America on the Nicaragua-Honduras border. She grew up in a family of traditional healers. When she was four years old, she began learning the art of curanderismo in the traditional way taught from mother to daughter, generation to generation. Flor de Mayo is president of the Confederation of Indigenous Peoples of the Americas, an organization that carries the wisdoms of traditional native people to global audiences. She's a featured speaker on curanderismo at international conferences about traditional medicines. She's also worked with Native American and alternative Western healers, and her knowledge and healing skills are recognized by medical doctors, nurses, and medical institutions. You can learn more about her at grandmotherflordemayo.com. It's grandmother, F-L-O-R-D-E-M-A-Y-O.com. And we'll be talking about clearing our hearts for the new earth on Dare to Dream today. And just a little heads up before we get started, we had a computer snafu during this interview and a crash that actually lost the first 20 minutes of the interview. So the sad thing is lost and with every great effort has not been able to be recouped. But it gives me great pleasure to tell you that the final 40 minutes are completely intact. And I will tell you, this woman is brilliant and the work she does, very powerful. So you will get to see the best of the best and I have retained that for you. And uh, in this, just so you know, some of the things that we discussed about in the very beginning, she opened with a prayer to the goddess Ish. And I'm sorry, you'll miss that, but she will close with another prayer. You will learn what you would have learned in the first 20 minutes was that she's born under the sign of the seed in Mayan astrology, and that she is known for her work as being a caretaker of the seeds. And that came about from a vision that she received during the dialogue with the beloved mother, and that the seeds need protecting. And part of how she does that is put them in bundles and reaches out to newborn babies and uh, she runs an organization called The Path, which is dedicated to the conservation and preservation of heirloom and heritage seeds. The Path prepared seed bundles to be given to the parents of babies being born. And she's deeply connected to the divine feminine. And uh, Flor de Mayo uh, obviously has its origins in an idea about uh, flowers and and nature. So she was truly born with that name and it is so perfect. So with that, 
I wish you to have the most enjoyment out of these next 40 minutes and enjoy this brilliant woman, Grandmother Flor de Mayo. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and as always, I thank you so much for tuning in, staying with us. Remember, subscribe, like, leave a comment. I read all of them and bless you on your path. So I just want to be absolutely sure to let everybody know that I, I can't say that I'm out there working in the field. I cannot say that I have studied. I've gone to school and have a degree in, in, in any of this, but ever since I was little, we did have our own little gardens as children. And I did grow as a child, but as an adult, what my job has become is to pray because I hold the seeds in ceremony. Can you explain what that means, holding the seeds in ceremony? Well, I literally mean that I hold the seeds in my hands. I pray with them. I do fire ceremony. I do water ceremony. I, I, you know, build like little earth mounds and put them and hold them in ceremony. It's, it's, it's the way that we express ourselves. Um, but that's, that's what I do. I, I pray with them and I listen. I listen to uh, messages that they might have. And it's this incredible, beautiful world out there. When I was little, I remember, because I come from such a large family, it isn't like we you know, had birthday parties and, you know, we celebrated, you know, things that um, a lot of people do. What we celebrated was everyday life. And my mom, I remember she said to me, uh, she said, child, I have a gift for you. And she's like, really, really happy. And when somebody tells us, that they have a gift for you, you bring your hands out, right? Mm -hmm. And so I brought my, my hands out and my mother puts in my hand this huge, huge avocado pit. Mm -hmm. And the avocado was like this big. I remember looking at it like, like, a, you know, like for the first time. And my mom said to me, this is a baby, a baby tree. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I just, I just fell in love with the magic of possibility that here I was holding an unborn tree. And so I said to my mom, what do I need for my baby tree? So she said to me, you need to find a place in the yard that it can get full sun you need to find that it has good soil and you need to uh, not be too far away from the water that you're going to bring to it every day. So my beautiful, my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful avocado, avocado tree is still living. It must be like 40 feet big mm -hmm. and it feeds everybody, mm -hmm. including animals. And so she is just full of, full of fruit all the time. And in Central America, we have uh, four uh, growing seasons, which is a huge blessing. Yes. I've always felt that way about pine cones. I've always had a place in my heart with pine cones because it has the seeds of all new beginnings. It's actually yeah. it's beautiful creature, right? And the design is just spectacular as it is almost in yeah. a form. Yeah. And then to know how many seeds exist within it that can start to populate and create new trees is, I've always found that very moving. Yeah, yeah. 
And so it it opens it opens us as humans into this incredible wonder and magic that is happening right before our eyes. And um, and so my mom introduced it to me as a baby, a baby tree, and it was the sweetest thing. It was so absolutely sweet. It was one of the sweetest gifts that my mom gave me. Yeah. And also, I know that you are called a priestess. So I have a lot of fascination about that. What does your role as priestess entail and mean? I would love to know. It's uh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's it's uh, you know just becoming that and being recognized. Um, I wish I could share the list of things that has to be accomplished. Yeah, and you have to pass pass these um, tests. Yeah, oh, how difficult are the tests? The tests are pretty difficult. You have to be incredibly intuitive. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. You have to be at a place of all knowing and understanding that, that you have the power. If I may share with you, I received several years ago in a um, ceremony, in a medicine ceremony, uh, four nights in a row, I had the divine come to me and every night say to me, you're a shaman, you're a priestess, you're a healer. And the first night I was negotiating because I said, I don't really understand what that means. I may have people like that on my show. I may know people like that in my life who are highly gifted, but, and they would not let up. Um, it really got so extreme. They were asking me to ask the shaman for a blessing. And I finally would acquiesce and do what they asked. And the shamans were just beautiful about it. And when I came back from that experience, I, I thought, I don't know what to do with this information. This is profound information, but I don't know where to go with it. And I know people who are highly, highly gifted. And they were so kind to say, you know, let us gift you with some experiences and let's see what comes out of this. So I'd really never successfully done past life regressions or anything like that. And it wasn't exactly my thing, although I fully believe in it. And we had amazing success. And I was able to see in one lifetime myself as a male, I know exactly what I look like and where I lived out in the plains. And I know the animals that were close by and what I lived in and what was in this uh, structure that was made out of animal hide and twigs and things. And it was very, not twigs, but you know, really strong branches. And it was very profound, it was very beautiful. And then I saw another, at another time when they worked with me, I saw another lifetime that really surprised me as a Mayan priestess. And she was extremely tall and very, very, very different than me, of course, in looks, but definitely in energy and personality. Um, and she was so powerful. And during one of our conversations, I was making an assumption about her and how she came from here in this culture and working with the divine and she made it, her name was Nedra, and she made it very clear to me she was not from this planet, that she came from somewhere else, some other planet system to live here and become this Mayan priestess. And so I'm bringing this around because I still, even with that profundity, that information, I never knew what to do with it except to say, in whatever ways I am here to be a healer, I, I accept, you know, just show me. Um, I was shown in another ceremony you know, that I had left music behind many years ago when I got into radio, that I, I had been a professional singer and they said, sing again, sing, play. And so I am now in a band called the Lions of Lyra. And we do, we play for all sorts of healing events and ceremonies and so forth. We do medicine music. I sing in Spanish and English and uh, Lakota. And some of my words are curandera and espiritu. So I know these words. And so I thought, well, maybe that is my path of the shaman priestess healer. I accept whatever that is. I didn't even know you were a Mayan priestess when I asked you to come on the show until I read your bio. And there was something in me that said this. 
It's not exactly full circle, but this is a piece of the puzzle somehow to be talking to you about this because I don't fully understand what it is for me, uh, but I know that to be with you and know that you already hold this high honor. And it just feels like it's very meaningful to the story that I shared. Absolutely. Um, I, I would like to um, just make a, a, a small short comment about this. Uh, to become a priestess, it has to be written in the stars. Mm-hmm. To become a priestess, you have to do the work. You have to walk with an elder. They have to recognize what you do and have done. And the last, um, the last, how should I say, um, tangible uh, project that I did that I was guided by the holy ones is the seed temple and the temples for humanity here on the land. So we are called to, to do things and to follow and to become to become dreamers to 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 become the warriors of the light hmm. to be able to to go into the edge of the universe to grab the vision the dream embrace it in your heart come down into the physical world and manifest it into reality. It takes all of that. You just being, a good, being a good listener. Mm-hmm. But it's all about recognition. You know, it's all about, you know, how the teacher recognizes you. Are, do you still know your teacher and work with your teacher? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. My, my teacher is in his mid nineties and he's still physically here with us. And I, and I do, you know, I still work with them. Yes. And the, the, the way that the teachings are in Central America is that once uh, you have uh, become one with your teacher, there is no separation, whether he leaves his physical body first or you do. There is always that interaction. Ah, even if not in the physical form, they will still come back. To right. You Absolutely. Yes. Do you have quite a team that is unseen, but that you see and interact with? Absolutely. Yeah. So what I wanted to share with you about these experiences that uh, you've had, you know, through um, uh, the medicine um, and um, what they have, uh, how you were honored, um, Debbie, we as humans, I, I'm convinced from just experiencing a lot of things throughout my life that we don't have the capacity as humans to see um, the beings that we are outside of this physical body. Mm-hmm. And so when the holy ones are honoring you and acknowledging you it's because that's how you are seen to them where as you see me here as a grandmother with my shawl my glasses my multicolored outfit i don't look like that if you are to see me in spirit and i'll tell you what i look like yeah. I'm absolutely made of a luminous color. Everything about me is luminous. My skin, my body, my hair, my eyes. But I still look human. I don't have the same face, but I am a humanoid. But I'm luminous. As in light body? That's a good question. I cannot answer that. Mm. Yeah. 
And you see this in your dreams or you see this when you're awake or both? It was an awakened experience. I had a luminous being stand next to me. I was actually with my teacher in his home. And I turned around to my left and I said to this being, I said, who are you? And the being said to me, Flor de Mayo, I am you and you are me and we are one and the same. Smiled at me, entered my body and I looked at myself through my physical eyes and I was this luminous being. Ah, wow. And I hear you saying that I was being honored and being presented like you alluded to in the beginning. We're so much more than what we see or know. This, oh, absolutely. This- yeah. What we see, this physical body, this hair, this everything, it's not, it's not who we are. It's not who we truly, truly are. And it's not how the Holy Ones see us. Mm -hmm. The invisible beings, the beloved mother. It's not, that's not who they see, what they see. And if they called upon you by certain names, then that's who you are. And you should, you should, how should I say, accept it. Like I accept this luminous being. Thank you so much for that. That's very, very helpful. It really is. Mm-hmm. And for you as a curandera espiritu, a divine healer of the spirit, what's the importance for you of prayer? And what's the importance of becoming one? The importance of prayers and the importance of becoming one. Talk about curandera espiritu and how that manifests, how you work with that. Well, I have been a curandera espiritu by birth. I have recollections from the time that I was very, very little. And I share with people that I'm here in this physical body, but I have one foot in the world of spirit. And so when I pray, I go in that place. When I listen to people, I go in that place. When I do healings, I go in that place. I am always in and out of that place. So espiritu means that you work with the divine and are guided by the divine. And people come to you for healings. And what kind of things do you work with them on? Um. Too numerous to mention. Mm -hmm. Um, I have not had any too many people come to me physically in the last couple of years because of uh, what we've been going through with the COVID. Um, But um, I am also able to communicate and dialogue through the computer. And so I do healings, uh, you know, um, like, like this. Yeah. Right. So through zoom or Skype or one of the, right. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. And you've said, this is a quote from you, Flora de Mayo. You've said in this time of movement where celestial doors have opened, we must do what we have been asked to do. We are standing in the movement and the vibration of a sacred prophecy. The prophecy tells us that consciousness is preparing the spirit of the feminine, the spirit of the grandmothers. It is in the prophecy that we shall walk into the light united from the four directions. Sacred prophecy and its vibration standing in the movement. Can you talk a little bit about what that is? I've had uh, many, many visions in which uh, we have, uh, I've been shown For example, humanity being at a crossroads. I have um, had visions where I have been taken into another dimension and I have um, been praised 
for praying, not only myself, but many, many people. So we were called to this place, a group of people, hundreds of people, maybe more. And these holy beings said, you know, we brought you here to say thank you because your prayers are helping humanity. You've also said, quote, my connection is not stronger than yours. We all just need to have a clear heart to hear the guidance. For folks who maybe feel like oh, I was not born exactly with those powers that Grandmother Flora de Mayo is describing, but I would like also to be able to be functional in this area. How can we clear our hearts so we can have connection and guidance? If we want more of that, please. Well, um, let's say, for example, today on the day of Ish, this day is an incredible day in which we clear anything, all internal conflicts. We put them aside. We ask for forgiveness and put it aside and start clearing our hearts. It's, it's work. It's work. If we want to do this, um, we have to be um, responsible for uh, putting the work to walk your talk, basically. Yeah. Um, constantly clearing uh, your physical body uh, to allow the light to move through you and to receive the messages, clearing your heart specialists, especially so that we can hear, you know, that, that beautiful truth through the heart. Mm. Are there any rituals or practices that would create that, that would facilitate clearing out our emotional, physical, all the vibrations of who we be so that we can really be clean and clear to receive guidance? Uh, sure, sure, we can do that, um, Debbie, yes. So um, in the beginning, in my prayers, I call upon the heart of the heavens and the heart of the earth, okay? And uh, we are told that we are children of the heart of the heavens and the heart of the earth. So if we imagine that the energy of the heart of the, of the heavens heavens is above us and the heart of the earth is underneath our feet. Okay. What we do is that simultaneously we call upon the light of the heart of the heavens to come and enter our, our being through our heads. And at the same time, we call upon the heart of the earth to move up our body from the, from the earth. And we allowed both of these energies to come and enter into the heart, to clear the heart. When the heart is clear, then we can send this energy out into the four directions. And it is something that it, it is um, very beautifully done, and it does work. Mm, beautiful. Okay. And I know that your knowledge, your healing skills have been recognized by Western medicine and doctors and nurses and so forth. Are, is there a story you can tell? Tell me more. I want to know in what ways have your healing skills been witnessed or revealed that they've seen and acknowledged? That's an um, that's interesting um, question. So... Um, I'm, I'm just going to, let's say, for example, one time, okay? I am uh, on stage um, in this very, very large um, conference. And I was guided to ask for a volunteer. And somebody came and I uh, said to the person, you know, please you know, lay here where the person could be seen. And then I started to talk to the person and mentioning to her that I was standing at her feet, okay? 
and that I was going to start to move my energy so that I can do a diagnostic about her. And so I am standing at her feet. And at that moment, I had like a clear picture of what was going on with her. And I remember that I had like this mic on me. And so did the person. And so I said to her, I want you to tell me everything that you feel and everything that you see. And so I was only there at her feet. Okay. And perhaps maybe, you know, with my hands like this, I was very close to the sole of, of her feet. And then I was told to encourage her to talk to the audience on what was going on, okay? And then I was instructed to move away from the, the stage. And basically what they said to me was, two things. You can sit in the audience or you can go behind the curtain. And so I made a choice of sitting in the audience because this way um, people saw that I was sitting down in the audience. Okay. And the girl continued, continued, and she talked about her healing and she talked about me doing this and doing that and able to go through um, her body and concentrate in an area where she was having a lot of discomfort. Okay. And in the discomfort, I was able to relieve it, release it and transmute it and turn it into light. And so the girl mentioned all of this and I am sitting in the audience. And at, towards the end, I started, um, I was instructed to go back, you know, to um, uh, on the stage. And at this time, I was like on one side of the stage, whether it was the right or the left, I don't remember. And so I stood there. And um, I gradually um, started to speak to her very softly and uh, saying to her that on the count of three, I wanted her to open her eyes. And um, after a while, she kind of sat, you know, she was on the floor, like on a mat or something. And she sat down and she said to me, Frodo Mayo, thank you so much. She said, the pain is gone. Okay. And so there was this uh, dialogue amongst the people sitting and the girl on stage because I had nothing to do with anything. And so it was just like this beautiful experience, not only for me to realize that we're not, you know, the healers, we're the, the conduit of energy connecting her to the, to the universe. And then, you know, they said to me, just move on, go sit down somewhere, you know? <laughs> and so uh, being obedient and doing what you are told, you know? I mean, you just don't have second thoughts, you know? You're out there in public. Not only that, but it was being televised, you know? So I don't know how many other people saw that. And so the conversation was uh, very intriguing because later on, I came back and I said, hey, the truth of the matter is that it's up to the divine, you know, and our... Um, uh, 
connection with the higher source. And this is how the healings are done. Well, it sounds really, really powerful for the audience to watch something like that being facilitated and to come through you and to create change in real time. And certainly for the both of you that were engaged with that, that's what a skill that is. And I understand you have knowledge about crystal skulls. Is this true? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm smiling and giggling. You know, everybody has knowledge. Everybody, everybody. The thing is, you know, for us to understand that the skulls does not translate to um, that it represents death. Okay, the um, the crystal skulls. It is something that is taught in the beginning in Maya creation story. There was a grandmother who created everything for the for the Mayan children, the Mayan people. And when she was creating that, there was nothing else but this, the Mayan world. And so the grandmother is in the midst of creating, and she had created everything, including the children. But at this moment, she then called upon the lords of the four directions. And, and the lords are androgynous beings. They have both male and female names. But the lord of the West is known as Lord Keme. And Lord Keme is in the shape of a skull. Okay. And how he be, the lord became a skull is when the grandmother called, it became down from the heavens as a shaft of light. And this shaft of light started to talk to the children and to teach the children. The light gave the children the wisdom it counseled the kid, the children. And as the time passed, this light solidified into crystal. And at the top of the crystal, there became a skull. And so the skull was speaking and you could see the mouth like moving, okay? Now, one of the children said to the skull, the child said, um, Lord Keme, why is it that you look like this cranium? And the Lord Keme said, uh-huh, it's to remind you that here in this cranium is the brain and the intelligence of your humanity. But when you see it in a crystal cranium, the crystal holds the knowledge of the stars. When you as a human walk with a crystal skull, you become a celestial human, a carrier of the celestial knowledge, and also a carrier of the terrestrial knowledge. And that is like the beginning of this whole thing. But the skulls hold this incredible, what I would say, say the word magical energy. And it takes me 
into incredible, incredible places. And I have to say to everybody, I do not do plant medicine. (laughs) (laughs) I understand your statement. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I have been born like this. It's been my life. And, and I, you know, I, I have experiences that are absolutely undescribable. And I just hold them in my heart. Mm -hmm. So would you say, based on the explanation you just gave, that crystal skulls are actually a vessel of consciousness and knowledge of the past, present, and future, celestial, as well as terrestrial? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. And this is an interesting question because, you know, we started out talking about you were given visions of a planet that was very difficult to look at. That was a a possible outcome for this planet. And obviously we can weigh in and say, I don't know that we are doing that well at this time. And we certainly can make better choices. Where we are right now, grandmother, is it possible to birth a new humanity? What are the realistic possibilities? You know, it's very, very possible. And I have been shown, I've been speaking about this for many, many years. Humanity is like this, at a crossroads. We have walked up to this peak. And some are going here and some are going here. Which side is going to be the successful side, that is part of the great mystery. So are you saying that what the world is going through right now is actually a part of a new birthing? We are in the midst of that. Yes, we are. Very uh, difficult birth, I would say. Absolutely. Very, very difficult. We need a lot of your seed bundles, I think. Yeah, seed bundles for the babies and seed bundles for the possible, we hope, healthy baby we are here to birth right now. Yeah, absolutely. And to remember that, you know, holding seeds in your hands, we are holding living, breathing children. And they need care. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we're fragile like that as well right now. The planet itself. It's condition. Everything is very fragile right now. Yeah. So Flora de Mayo, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and hopes? Well, that's a really interesting question. The way that I run my life, and this is like for real, okay? Um, I'm trying to walk my talk. I'm, I'm a human being. Um, but I take a moment at a time and I am always in the moment and I, I dream that the children of the future in my heart, I dream that they will see and be in this, you know, beautiful paradise, as I did when I was a child, that everything is going to get resolved here on the earth, that we are going through uh, these um, reality changes, that we have no place to go, but to move forward and do the right thing. And for folks who want to find you, they can go to your website, which is grandmotherflordemayo.com. It's grandmother, F-L-O-R-D-E-M-A-Y-O.com. Anything you'd like to say here at the end to the listeners and the viewers? I'd like to, um, to be able to close with a short prayer. Thank I want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart all of my brothers and sisters, children of the beloved goddess, beloved beauty, beloved sacred light, beloved spirit of the goddess Ish, 
Thank you. Thank you, beloved creator, as you remind us constantly that we as humans, both male and female, must walk in balance with nature. We do it for the future generations, and we do it because we are the seed carriers of the future generations. In the name of all that is sacred, beloved creator, I thank you on this sacred day, and I thank each and every one of you in the four directions. I bow to you. I thank you. Much love and light. Grandmother Flor de Mayo, thank you so much for coming on the show. You did not disappoint. And I'm just so honored to have this connection with you now. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you so much. Have a blessed rest of your day. Yes. And I end today's show with this quote from Grandmother Flor de Mayo. It has been prophesized that the women will have the power to move and to be leaders and to bring people into the light. You can subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast to hear this weekly number one transformation conversation. My guest next week is Vivian Chavet, a galactic healer. She's a multidimensional channel and ambassador who assists humanity's transition towards multidimensional consciousness. Vivian is internationally recognized for her inspirational life journey as an advanced Arcturian hybrid. And if you're listening to the podcast and you would like to see us, go to YouTube, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger and subscribe there. We love to have you join and like and watch this amazing series with these amazing guests. And do not just dare to dream. I think today grandmother gave us a much bigger dream. And for all of us who are here and listening to this, the light workers, the warriors of light, as she called them, it truly is our mission. It's part of our job of why we came here. So go do the work. Go be who you came here to be, that big, luminous self. Thanks for joining us today.